Hey guys! So today's video is going to be showing you how to make character foam props. Um, I make these all the time and I am constantly being asked how to make them. In this video you'll be learning where to get all of the different supplies and materials. Um, how big or how I am able to make my props so big, how big I make them, what equipment I use to do that, and just my thoughts on some of the equipment that you end up having to use for these things. So keep watching. So to make anything out of foam, you will have to invest in a foam cutter. You can get big ones like this one, um, or you can get small ones like this. This one is available really anywhere, including Walmart. Um, it is the Styro Cutter Plus. And if I'm remembering correctly, I want to say it was like 10 to $12 when I bought it, but I could be wrong. It's been a while. Um, this one here has measurements. If you need that, I literally never use the measurements. I got this one at Hobby Lobby, and I used a 40% off coupon, or you can just wait for when this is on sale. So there's that. It is the Marvi Uchida Foam Cutter, and it comes with that wire right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a very, very, very thin wire, and the wire gets really, really hot, and it's able to melt foam. The next piece of equipment or supply that you will need to do your foam props is your hot glue gun. There are a ton of people who hate to work with hot glue, but unfortunately when it comes to this, you will need to use hot glue. If you want, you can use the low temp hot glue, but I always work with my high temp and it is still my preferred method of adhesion. So go with what you want, but this is just what Adriana is recommending. Next up is going to be your actual foam. Your foam cutter can cut any type of foam except for foam board that you get like at Walmart or Dollar Tree for projects. If your foam has that paper on it like a foam board like the ones that you use for school projects and stuff stuff these foam cutters are not going to cut through that because it is meant only for foam it is not meant for the paper that is on top of that foam board so this foam board um poly foam i believe it's called i get this from home depot and lowe's just depending on who has it available at the time you can get it in packages where it'll have um like four sheets I want to say it's about three feet by one foot I believe or however much I I can't remember right now it's probably like fifteen dollars and that's easy to pick up and travel with because this sheet that I get mine comes in four foot by either eight or nine feet sheets this is just a very very small piece compared to the ginormous four foot by eight foot piece of foam that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Of that four foot by eight foot sheet of foam, I want to say is about $13, $14. And in case you're wondering, this foam is three quarters of an inch thick. I just, this is just the thickness that I prefer. If you want to go looking for something that's thinner or thicker, feel free to do so. To me, this is just the one that I found first and I've just kept using Hello. it. So. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my uh, bigger wire cutter. Alright, so to make your foam prop, you will need to go ahead and cut out your characters. Um, I do use my Cricut machine to cut out my characters, unless it's something big, then I cut it out by hand. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot is how am I able to make my character prop so big? And while there is a method using the Cricut design space that where you're able to cut larger than mat and make really big props, I actually don't use that method only because I have a large format printer. If you don't know what that is, it is just a printer that is able to print large I'm pictures. Going to be using cardstock for this just because we're going to be working with hot glue and um, as well as cutting around it. And if you use thin computer paper, it can actually burn the edges of your paper and it'll leave like a burn mark. So again, I just recommend to use cardstock. Any cardstock will work. I get my cardstock from Walmart, so any cardstock will work. As I mentioned before, I use hot glue. I don't use spray glue because the spray of it, the um, 
chemical that's in the spray glue will actually melt your foam. So do not use spray glue. I also don't use recommend Mod Podge just because there's no point in it. Um, I have also used double sided adhesive. It sticks for about a minute and then it comes off. So hot glue is what I have noticed works the best. If you use low temp glue, it dries, it hardens pretty quickly so you don't have much time to work with it. And then when you use your hot glue, you just want to give it a second, I guess, if you want, if that's what you want to call it, before you set it down. And only do parts of your, of the back of your character at a time. Glue sometimes does come out of the edges, so just be careful. Also, just in case you're wondering, spray paint, if you ever wanted to spray paint some foam, the spray paint will melt your foam. So, just save yourself some time there. <laughs> I go ahead and I keep gluing the edges of the back of my cardstock, and I glue just little pieces at a time like this. That way my glue does not harden before I get a chance to stick it down. This is how I do every single one of my props and never once has the glue melted through the foam. So as long as you're not pouring like a mountain of hot glue onto the foam, you should be fine. Alright, so from there, I just quickly cut it out just to get rid of this big piece of foam here. You can already see that it's not big enough to cut the entire thing, so I have to cut it in pieces. Like this. So like I said, it's just a lot of investment time-wise and money-wise. Commitment-wise. I'm going to go ahead and slowly just work your way around. And you're going to feel that while you're kind of tugging... This is just because it's a wire. It's like just, you know, you rubbing something up against the wire. You're going to feel that it's going to stick sometimes. So you want to go slowly. But because it does stick sometimes, that's another reason that you don't want to use thin paper. Because when it gets caught, it will start to melt that paper. There you go. If you ever miss a spot, you just go back. So that's what that looks like. You'll have some small pieces that want to come off. There's the sides. You can see that you're going to get ridges. All these little lines are where the wire kind of just got caught. So you'll get some places where it's super smooth, like right here. But then some places like this where you're going to get lots of ridges. No one's ever complained about it, but if, you know, I'm just letting you know that that does happen. And then what I do is I go ahead and I grab my reversed image. And I place it on here to see if it matches up. And so I can see that like right there it's a little off. I can see some foam sticking out so I'm going to have to cut that. And then, this is what I mean by sometimes it doesn't match up. I'm going to flip it over real quick. And you can see the cardstock sticking out back there. So, because this is cut by my Cricut machine, I know for a fact that it was cut exactly the same measurements as this one. The only thing is, though, is the foam itself. Even though I have it against the flat surface here, it still seems to cut the foam at a tiny bit of an angle to where anything you put on the back of it, you can see. So I'm looking at this eye level right here, and I can see that cardstock sticking out in the back. So if I do this, of course you can't see it, but once I like stick it more straight, this is, look, I have it flat on the table. This is, 
even if I, you know, get down to that level, I can still tell that this paper back here sticks out for some reason. So that is, it's a tiny, tiny downside, but again, I'm trying to make sure that you guys see the absolute truth of this. So. And this is how I do all of my foam cutouts. Anything that's on foam, that's how I do it. I don't always make them double-sided, but the method of gluing the stuff down and of cutting this out, that's how I do it. I do not paint this because I don't have that much time on my hands. However, I do occasionally paint or glitter the bases, which you can see on my Instagram and Facebook when I post all of my work. And that is an option for you as well if you want to do that. All right. So you press down and then you just keep gluing. And then all you have to do is stick a skewer in there or a popsicle stick or whatever kind of wooden dowel you want to use. You just stick it in there and you can stick it onto your base. I use different shaped bases such as square, the half ball ones, the round discs that you can get from Dollar Tree. But yeah, you can um, use any one you want. You can see me putting glue directly onto the foam there and the foam does not melt because I'm not oversaturating it and I'm working quickly. And there you go. That is a foam prop. Like I said, this is three quarters of an inch thick. So it's pretty sturdy. But if you mess with it too much, it can break, so be careful. <laughs> I just, I know my foam. I've been working with it for a really long time, so. So, yeah. So, just to recap really fast, I got my small little um, wire foam cutter, the stick one from, I believe I got it from Michael's the first time, and the second time I got it from Walmart. Either way, I hate them both, but it's still useful once in a while. And if you don't want to throw down a lot of money and just to practice with, I would suggest to go ahead and get that just so that you can kind of get a feel for it and see if you like doing this. I got my large foam cutter from Hobby Lobby. I used a coupon, but I still believe I paid between $30 and $40 for it. Um, it comes with three hot wires, and then if you run out of those and you need more, you do have to go to the... Um, not Hobby Lobby website, but the website of the maker of the actual foam cutter and then order more of those. I believe it's a three pack for like $10 and then it ships really slowly to your house, um, <laughs> but that's how you would do that. So I have had this foam cutter for about a year and I am on my second set of my wire cutters, uh, meaning like my six or seven actual hot wire. If they get really, really hot and you don't clean them, they eventually do break. So you have to be careful. And then again, I got my polyfoam from Hobby Lobby and Lowe's. Just depends who has it in stock at the time. I prefer to get the really, really humongous four by eight foot sheets, but you can also get some that are in smaller packs. I have just found that price wise, it is more valuable for me to get it really, really big. If you guys have any more questions, put them in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. If you haven't joined my Facebook group and you do have a Facebook and you want to do that, be sure to join. We have a lot of people that are first timers as well, so you can just kind of jump in on that. Make sure to become a design innovator and visit the link that is in my description box below. Check out my Facebook and Instagram to see all of my work. Let me know what you think and um, just let me know what other tutorials you guys would like to see. Alright, see you next time.